Hello, and this is the introduction to Desktop Estimator. This is the screen that will, that will come up when you start the program. As you notice, you have takeoff sets 1, 2, 3, through 6. Under each takeoff set, you have a system of assemblies that you can take off, such as stem wall foundation assemblies, brick and stone veneer assemblies, floor and stair framing assemblies and so forth. To open an assembly you need to click on the drop down box next to each one. So for instance if we click on stem wall foundation assembly we choose yes. The yes turns red signifying that these tabs are now open and if you look at the bottom of the screen, the tabs are located right here. So for this particular assembly, we have a foundation worksheet, we have a foundation concrete purchase order, a foundation concrete work order, which would be for your labor, a CMU stem wall purchase order, and a CMU stem wall work order, again, which is for labor. If we open the worksheet, you see that this is divided into several continuous footing assemblies. So if you have a single type continuous footing, you would put it on each line item. So this would be continuous footing such as 1, continuous footing number 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. And you can put those names in here to identify what the plan is calling it out as. As we start, you can tab over and you're going to enter in the size of the width of the footing in inches. So if the footing is 30 inches wide, you put in 30. If the depth of the footing is 12 inches, and so forth. When you do the takeoff, you're going to put the takeoff length of that, in, that footing in here. So if we say the takeoff is 121 feet, we choose the rebar that's in the footing, the continuous rebar, how many are in there, if there's a trans rebar, choose the rebar, what the spacing might be in inches. This will automatically, if you notice, this gives you the length in inches of the rebar for the trans rebar. If you want it to be less than that, you can change it here. If you're using stirrups, you're going to pick the size stirrup that you're going to have. This is the clearance from the edge of the concrete to the stirrup. So we we'll subtract that from this length to calculate the actual length of the stirrup and what the size of the stirrup would be. You enter in how many corners. 90 de these are 90 degree corners, so you enter in how many of those 90 degree corners are in there. This will calculate how many pre-bent corners you need. You choose the concrete PSI that you want from here. You choose if you want a line pump, a boom pump, or no pump. Uh, if you have dowels, choose the size of the dowel, the ratio of the dowel that you want to use, the spacing of the dowel, and it will automatically calculate the dowels for this footing assembly. If you want to use a wood for for your forms, if you want to rent forms, or if you don't want to use any forms, you just choose NA. In this case, we'll choose wood. So now we have completed our first footing assembly. If we go to the foundation concrete purchase order, you will see that in this concrete purchase order, you have 2 by 12s 21 pieces, 12 feet long. You have your rebar chair. You have your how many yards of concrete you're going to use for that footing. You have your continuous rebar, your trans rebar, how many corners you're going to have, rebar caps for your, for your dowels. These are the dowels that you chose, number 5, 12 by 60. These are grade stakes that would be used to grade the ground and loop ties that will be needed. If 
we go to the concrete work order, we, we see that we have a setup in here. This is a one-time setup for each, each time you have a a footing. Continuous footing assembly, you have 121 lineal feet. You have 0.49 tons of rebar. This is your flat work forms labor to set the forms and this is if you're going to use a pump that we chose a line pump it's telling you it, the charge would be for 12 yards. You then would enter in your unit cost for each one of these and it would calculate out. 